Thank you. Thank you, Acting President. And uh, firstly, I also would like to uh, thank Mr Somirek for bringing this motion before the House. Um, this is a very serious matter. And um, I, I concur with Mr Mulholland that it is something that uh, members of parliament should engage with. And I would also like to add to his point that um, many of our constituents, uh, especially in the southeast metro region, uh, have fled authoritarian regimes. Uh, for example, in the southeast metro, there are many people who have fled uh, the communist uh, regime of China, that have fled Vietnam and many other places. And many of these people are targeted by intelligence agencies. And I would like to um, focus on one of the points that Mr Somirex raised, point three, where he states um, he invites ASIO to provide a briefing to members of the Victorian Parliament on the advanced tactics referenced by Mr Burgess, which are used by foreign agents to enlist and undermine members of Parliament. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to tell a story of something that happened in 2020, um, which I think was a, uh, a dreadful saga that affected my constituents in South East Metro. And, uh, I received, in early 2020, I received a letter from uh, Falun Gong uh, group. You might know them. They're a uh, minority group who are uh, heavily persecuted in China, and uh, many of them have fled China and made Australia their home. And uh, they, they are people that believe in uh, tolerance and compassion. And, and uh, this letter was a copy of a letter that was sent to the ABC, and it was begging, effectively begging the ABC to not broadcast a documentary that the ABC had put together that was, they thought was smearing their organisation. That wasn't their main concern though. Their main concern was that this uh, documentary would be used in China to further religious persecution of their friends and family back in China. And um, I was outraged when I received this letter. The idea that Australian taxpayers' money would be used to uh, produce material that would be used for religious persecution was one of the most outrageous things that I could imagine. And so, um, <clears throat> anyway, the ABC ignored their pleas and broadcast it anyway. Uh, as it turned out, uh, Falun Gong were, in fact, entirely correct. In fact, the very next day on a website uh, which is used by the Chinese Communist Party to uh, outline their activities to suppress uh, religious minority groups that they deem unacceptable, um, they had a translation of this and were stating how uh, the Australian people were waking up and, and and finally turning on these uh, evil dissidents uh, that were a menace. And um, I was outraged by it. I was outraged that uh, our national broadcaster had done this, despite being told what would happen and exactly what, what Falun Gong said would happen did happen. And I, I went to the media and I put in a formal complaint to the ABC. I, I put in a formal complaint to ACMA um, the ABC investigated themselves and found they did nothing wrong, and ACMA said they also did nothing wrong. I disagree with those points. I think that they put a very vulnerable uh, community in dire danger through their actions. But uh, to my absolute shock, uh, very soon after this uh, media was broadcast with me uh, complaining about the ABC, I found myself on the Communist Party's website, uh, calling me a traitor to my country, which hurt more than anything that's happened to me in Parliament, I think. And the reason that they called me a traitor is because I was defending the rights of a persecuted religious group and disagreeing with our state media. This is the type of people that we're dealing with um, that try to infiltrate and influence our country. And um, I just think that uh, it's, uh, it's a glaring omission that members of parliament aren't at least briefed on this sort of stuff by ASIO, 
by the types of uh, techniques that M Mr. Mr. Somurek has talked about here in point three, and and also like the types of things that we should watch out for in our community, because these people, many people who have escaped these authoritarian regimes, they're terrified to speak. And the reason that they're scared to speak is not because they're scared of Australian government. They've got friends and families that live back in these countries, and if they speak up, they're worried that their friends and families will get a knock on the door in the middle of the night, and it happens. I've spoken to people there that it's happened to, and um, it's just wrong. It's just wrong, and we need to be very mindful of this and, and watch out for these people. And um, I, I totally support that. Uh, you know, any any assistance that members of parliament can be given to help uh, fight back against this foreign interference um, would be very welcome. So thank you. Being a libertarian is sometimes described as like being the only sober person in the car, and no one will let you drive. The government is driving us into the dark. 